Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of another really interesting exoplanet known as Gliese 1132b. Maybe a future home for humanity? Maybe not. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this actually has been a pretty good year for discovering a variety of really cool Earth-like exoplanets. We've discovered Proxima b last year in 2016, and then in 2017 we've also discovered that TRAPPIST-1 system has seven Earth-like planets orbiting around it. And uh, back in 2015 we've discovered this star right here as well. This is known as uh, GJ1132b. I'm going to show you what it looks like in about a minute as soon as I can reposition myself so I can take a look at it from from a proper direction and this star is also known as Gliese 1132 now what we're going to uh, do is we're going to talk a little bit about this system and why it's kind of exciting that we've actually discovered it and um, on the other hand we're also going to talk about a new discovery that we've um, just recently announced in 2017 so first let's actually take a look at the star I'm going to move closer to it and as you can see, there's already some parameters that are showing right here. So this particular star is about 18% uh, mass of our own star, the Sun. And it's known as a red dwarf. This is a red dwarf type of a star similar to TRAPPIST-1, similar to the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, um, but um, bigger. It's much bigger than both of those. It's also um, about 20% uh, percent of, uh, in terms of the size of, the, uh, of our own sun. So our sun would be about this big. It would, be, it, was, it would be basically bigger. This particular star is not so big. But as you can see, it does have at least one exoplanet. I'm going to accelerate time here just to show you that there it is. It's orbiting around the star and it takes approximately 1.6 days to make one orbit. Now this is a planet known as Gliese 1132b. Gliese 1132b was not really on our radar until very recently because we've actually realized that we can potentially see the atmosphere on this planet. I'm gonna zoom to it just so you can see what it looks like in Space Engine and show it to you as well. So there it comes into view. There it is. Now, we've discovered that not only, not only does it actually have an atmosphere, but we found out that it's very thick atmosphere. And we've discovered that by using a very interesting technique where we basically look at the star and wait for the transit of the planet in front of the star, and then look at the various types of refraction that might be happening because of the atmosphere. And so, because certain um, light spectra are not actually... Uh, they cannot actually pass through uh, the atmosphere. We only detect certain parts of the stellar spectrum. And because of that, we we're able to see that this planet seems to have a very thick atmosphere. So let's talk a little bit about it while we actually go and explore its surface. One thing we know for a fact, except for the atmosphere, is that this is also very, very likely tidally locked. As you can see in the game as well, it's always facing with the same side to the star. This suggests that there's one side that's always hot, the sunny side, and there's one side that's always cold, the nighty side. I don't have a better word for it. This right here, this area right here, known as a twilight area, is probably the only area which might have some potentially um, relatively good temperatures, but the problem is um, with the atmosphere of this particular planet. So actually two problems. One problem is that, as you can see, it's a little bit too close to its parent star. So it's actually receiving approximately um, 19 times more solar radiation than our own planet Earth. And because of that, it gets really toasty here. And the other problem is that because of its thick atmosphere, similar to Venus, the actual atmosphere causes the entire planet here to be very hot. It's probably at least 200, but possibly 300 degrees Celsius, which is close to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit on both sides. So the thick atmosphere exchanges the heat all over the planetary surface, similar to Venus, and makes the entire planet very hot. So in other words, uh, GJ 
1132B is very likely not going to be on our radar for habitation, but it is going to be a very interesting planet to study just because we want to learn how to study atmospheric uh, layers and atmosphere in general on various exoplanets. One of the best reasons why this is such a good candidate is because it's actually not very far from us. If I actually select Earth, you'll notice that it's only about 39.3 light years away, which is about the same distance as from Earth to TRAPPIST-1. So it's relatively close to us in terms of spatial distances, so it's not very far away. So just to give you an idea of how close it is, if I were to zoom out of here um, and just look at all of this from sort of from top, from where you can see the galaxy essentially. So there is our galaxy, the Milky Way. The distance between our sun and this particular planet is basically just like this, this far. It's not very far at all, even though it is technically pretty far. But anyway, what's really cool about this planet is that you know, what's keeping this atmosphere? What is it that makes the atmosphere so thick here? And there's several um, potential possibilities and several proposals. Um, one of them is that we think that maybe this particular star is not as active as some other red dwarfs. We know that TRAPPIST-1 is very active, so all of the TRAPPIST planets are probably stripped of atmosphere completely. This one maybe is not what's known as a flare star. It might not, not actually flare up as much. In other words, it might not do this. It might not have too many flares uh, that you can kind of see uh, being emitted from the star, uh, but it might nevertheless still have some kind of flares that are similar to our own sun. On the other hand, what's keeping the atmosphere might also be the magnetic field. Because this planet spins relatively fast at 1.6 days per spin, this um, might suggest that this planet has a very strong magnetic field. It's also more massive than Earth, it's about 1.6 times more massive than Earth. And it's very likely going to have some kind of iron core in the middle, with some of the liquid iron forming a relatively powerful magnetic field that might actually protect this planet from um, being hit by solar radiation. And uh, because it's slightly larger than Earth as well, it's actually a very good candidate to study because this is essentially as Earth-like as we might discover in the next few years. These planets are not very common, so it's kind of rare that we actually found one that is similar in mass and size to Earth and also has atmosphere as well. Although technically this would be more similar to Venus because of the temperature. But despite being a good candidate for study, this once again is not a very good candidate for life. Or for our habitation, so we might never have to visit the system because, well, for one, the distance between this planet and the star is like 100 times closer than the distance between Earth and our Sun. So this is like really, really close. It's not in the habitable zone. It's not where you can have liquid water. So we're like 100% or I guess 99.9% .9 sure that there is no water on this planet. And if there is any water, it's going to be only in vapor format. But nevertheless, it'd be fun to study and find out more about this. And hopefully we will um, after the James Webb telescope launches in 2018. So we might be able to point the telescope here and use the infrared properties of that telescope to not only see the atmosphere, but study it in a lot more detail. But other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I just wanted to show you this new discovery and this really cool discovery of the atmosphere of this uh, beautiful planet known as Glias 1132b and just give you an idea of where we stand with discovering various Earth-like planets in our galaxy. Anyway, let's escape this system and maybe fly around our galaxy and finish this video here. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and potentially share this video with someone who likes to learn through video games and wants to learn more about space sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else interesting and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.